the previous episode, we travel from South Africa, spend a night at Komarano Sanctuary, cross the Boteti River to Kumaha. Cheers. Cheers, Chris. Cheers, Chris. And make the hard push to Southgate campsite in the Muremi National Park. So what a day it's been. Uh, the adventure has truly begun. In this episode, and after having already traveled 1,440 odd kilometers at the end of April, we pick up on day 6 as we pack down camp at Southgate. We begin the 38 kilometer drive to Northgate where we camp at the SKL campsites for 4 nights. The remaining full length trip would give us a total of 3,000 kilometers on a round trip to some of the more wilder places in Botswana. Enjoy the magic as I take you on what surely is a wild adventure. Just engaged for high, which is fantastic. Look, not that I really need 4x4 at the moment, but it is recommended when going off road just to maximize as much traction as you can. And if you think you need 4 low, then go with your gut instincts, access 4 low, put the car into second gear, and just use momentum as much speed as is necessary. We are on our way now to Kwai Northgate and it's a 38 kilometer drive. Uh, Tracks for Africa is saying it'll take us an hour to get there and we are driving through these really massive Mopani forests and they're beautiful. Very very lovely to be driving as the sun rises. The drive is not so bad, we're driving really slowly taking it nice and easy but yeah on the way to Northgate just arrived at Northgate Kwai and we're gonna register in sign in look I have very fond memories of Northgate it's got a very nice bridge to cross over to the Mohoto area. I've never seen these campsites before. I've heard so much about them from Ed. Uh, the bush felt has changed. It's become very riverine because this gate is right on the Kwai River and hence the name Kwai. So yeah, all in all a good trip but let's go and sign in. absolutely fantastic we've been here 10 minutes we've just we're trying to choose a campsite to make sure we've got enough space 
We parked up alongside the ablutions. And lo and behold, two massive bull elephants walked, if I say three meters from the trailers and the cars. Well, that's just what happened right now. And they standing here underneath these massive acacia trees, just grazing, so peaceful, so placid. Man, this is, this is fantastic. This is, this is the adventure. This is brilliant. first game drive at Northgate um, and the first little offshoot road that we've just taken we ended up into um, marshland and you can see that there's just a lot of water a lot of water literally 300 meters off the main road and it looks absolutely stunning but there's just a lot of water so we're carrying on on the main road and we're doing our first game drive very very chuffed very very happy uh, we set up our campsite at MK1 really nice campsite and the reason we chose that campsite is because it's got a good balance between shade and Sun so to charge our cars and trailers we use solar power and you need you need a good amount of sunshine to keep those batteries topped up so yeah we've settled in beds are made trailers are completely set up and we're on a game drive in what has to be one of the most majestic places in Botswana the Moremi game reserve fantastic let's see what we see
so we've had about six hyenas coming into the camp um, one was really close so we're just moving lights around they're fairly skittish uh, once they get spotted um, excuse the pun but uh, yeah just uh, it's quite a wild campsite yeah you kind of forget hyenas are the size they are mm. until you see them that close up again yeah Fucking why is even worse? So tonight, 10 mini cheese and bacon pizzas. We've got two pizzas from Chris, also minis. Uh, cheese and tomato going into the grid. Cook up all of them. If we don't eat all of them, we keep some for lunch tomorrow. We are just watching our backs because the hyenas are all around us. We've had about six or seven through the camp and one actually pulled right through past here. So let's get these pizzas in our stomachs. Hyenas, I'm not too concerned unless, like you say, Chris, they the numbers, yeah, numbers, numbers become a problem because they start fighting and cackling. And mm. always remember that when camping in the Moremi, be very cautious at night and early mornings when moving around your campsite. Always travel by car to the ablution blocks. This area is frequently visited by predators. As a practice, as soon as the fire dwindles, it's time to hit the sack. And this is like, yeah, it sounds about right. But I need it. Morning. Yeah, first night at Northgate Quiet. And we're on a morning drive now. We've just gone over the bridge and we're heading over to the Mohoto side of Quiet. But you know what's amazing to me is that literally one kilometer from the village, you have elephants, leopard, lion, hyena. So it's quite a strange little village because there's people walking on the dirt road right here and you know we saw a lion last night that was eight kilometers away from our camp. I mean eight kilometers for a lion to walk is, is nothing. So it's a uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's very impressive to see and I'd love to know or be able to speak to someone to find out like how, do, how does it work, you know, what is, I mean, because these people, I'm just looking at their spur now on the tracks and I mean, they're, they're, they're walking some massive distances. Here's another fella and there's a whole family. Um, so yeah, and, and, and it, you know, it, we had Leopard walk through our campsite last night. It showed me the spur this morning. It's this really weird relationship between man and animal and it works you know it works i mean they're in the wild this this, this village so so it's uh, 
it's nice to see it's nice to see and but i just love to try and understand you know i mean do these guys have do they have problems at night with lions do i mean do they have their, do they have leopard walking through their you know their yards do their dogs get taken out i'm sure all of the above happens just i find it very interesting to be honest so yeah we're on our way to uh, mohoto now it's about 12 kilometers away from the bridge the kwai bridge to get to the wilderness area so it's not too far um four kilometers of that is driving through the kwai village it is 8 30 in the morning i woke up a little bit late apparently i was snoring my head off according to old ed but i tell you last night i woke up at about sure i think it was two o'clock in the morning and i heard elephants they couldn't have been 20 meters away from our tents and breaking branches so yeah i was up i was up and then i had to go to the loo and then you know i, I went back to bed then i just had an eerie feeling then i heard hyenas i mean they also weren't far 100 meters from camp they didn't come into camp i shunned the torch out of the tent window but i had everything closed up the whole shop was closed up and uh, this morning it says no check man this uh this leopard walked through camp and basically went and visited all the cars all the tents um and actually walked right past where i went to the loo so oh shit, i don't know that's pretty scary eh? you know when you uh, i tell you what though that ace beam x70 torch man that thing is that thing is i pumped that thing full on eh? and it feels like daylight so there's nothing that's going to sneak up on me that's for sure but yeah let's carry on on the game drive
special. Eh? In so many words. I'm sure yeah. those wild dogs are going to come on this bridge just now. Yeah, they're not far away. Eh? Yeah. How's that pe the painted reed frogs? Eh? Hey, magic. Eh? Yeah, this Absolutely place. magic. Eh? You can't explain it in words. You need to come here to see it for yourself. This tiger fish are going off in the background. Eh? I'm surprised this this bridge can handle both of our vehicles' weight, but more impressively, our weight. Yeah. You and I. Yeah, no, but think about the, they bring those big unimogs through here, so we I should. I don't know how okay. you, you, don't, you wouldn't fit on you. You would. This thing would take a truck across here easy. Serious? Yeah, easy. Because the old bridge used to be here, but I see they've removed it, eh? There's the old yeah, pole. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. the last time I was here, it was. Yeah, I mean, you're catching a couple And there's mozzies here, eh? We've been fighting off one very, very, very cheeky hyena. He keeps on circling around us, moving right into the camp. So, we're being very careful, everything's packed away. But yeah, the other ones that have passed through haven't bothered us, but this guy's not scared. Eh? Yeah, I can hear him coming now. So, be vigilant. Don't have to be scared, but just be clever. Don't walk to the bathrooms, just drive. But yeah, it's magic, hey? this place is wild. And that's why we come here, and that's why we do this. So I'm using the Indiflate to lower my tire pressures. It's a brilliant little unit because it allows you to do two tires at the same time, simultaneous. And if there's any discrepancies between the two tires, let it sit for 10, 15 minutes and it will equalize the tire pressures in both tires. Um, I've gone with 1.6 in the front and 1.8 in the back. If it's still hard, I'll lower it and I'm just getting ready because tomorrow we drive to Savuti and I've heard that road is quite bad and a lot of thick sand. So lower that tire pressure, maximize the spread on your tires to gain that traction necessary to tow the trailer through to the Savuti. What happened Ryan? I was walking around campsite barefoot and uh, a tent bag jumped out at me and attacked my toe. Not quite the showing gauze scenario, but you're getting closer with every yeah, trip, Chris. Yeah, it looks like, eh? That's a pretty elaborative uh, kit you've got there. Yeah, well, it seems I'm the medic for the trip usually, so, uh, yeah, if uh, anybody does anything stupid, I'm shoving gauze. Or... So I heard something in the in the dustbin, but a shame, it's actually a crested barbet that's got caught down one of the pipes. I'm going to try and get him out. Shame, man. We just saved him. We just saved the crested barbet, my man. That thing was near death down there. It was never going to get out. Possible. Let's hope it's not his nest or something. <laughs> Otherwise, no, no ways, dude. He was stuck in there. No, there's nothing. Stuck in there, bro. You got him out, bro. We just saved him. Now, that makes me feel good, eh? Sure. That's amazing, bro. Magic, eh? Absolutely magic. 
<laughs> now I can carry on the trip feeling the good deed has been done. <laughs> Yeah, because we're going to die there, eh? He's never going to make it. You saw, he's the, I don't know how long he's been in there, dude. Shame, man. It is our final day at Kwai. Tomorrow morning, we leave to get to Savuti. We're aiming to leave at about 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. So, today we're just going to do some game driving, see what we see. Should be a good day. Should be a very good day. The plan is to get to my Bobby Gate tomorrow, into Savuti, and um, hold up for the next three days. What's also quite nice is we're joined by a good friend of ours from Matamba, Mark. He's coming in tomorrow to meet us at Savuti. He's got a very, very long drive. Um, and he's going to be bringing a bit of stock for us and said maybe he'd bring a Debonair's pizza. So <laughs> let's hope for that. Uh, that would be quite nice. So uh, that's lion spur, and it looks like a big, big male. The strange thing is, we're not even a kilometer away from the village. I think it's absolutely magic, eh? It's so fantastic to see how full the Kwai River is. Just to think where this water travels from. I mean, it's all the way from Angola, and it gets here and. <laughs> so green I mean the bush is alive absolutely alive and just really happy to be here mate so our last game drive in the choir area in Moremi and the bush is just too thick really to be honest um, and I was hoping that there'd be a lot more water on the road but such is the Kalahari sands they suck up that water very very quickly join us on the game drive and let's see what we can see taking some photos and some videos of Lechwe and we heard a rustle in the bushes and out has come a nice sized herd of elephant with little ones absolutely magic the privilege of being in the wild they're just milling about eating grass and drinking water fantastic
So, what a game drive that was. You know, we were out um, filming Lechwe. We haven't seen too many Lechwe, and we came around one of the off-roads, and we were out there where the water was. And as the sun began to set, this whole herd of elephant came out and ate the grass that's there and drank water and just milled around. So serene. It was absolutely, absolutely fantastic. This is why we come to places like this. It's off the beaten track, it's far from home and it's moments like that that make you realize just how special the Moremi is. Absolutely superb. I'd highly recommend coming to the Moremi Northgate Kwai SKL campsites. It's just, it's just special. It really is special. We're driving back now slowly and what a day, what a day. Tomorrow we wake up early, pack up, and we head for the Savuti. I'm looking forward to it. I've got another hyena in camp. We had about nine last night. Uh, this one seems a bit cheeky, so we're just being careful. stage of the trip whilst I'm riding on a on a high I am missing my family and I'm missing my kids so if you watch this guys love you very very much so glad that I lowered that tire pressure when I did. The ride has become so much more comfortable. So if you are looking for a little bit of advice when driving out here, try and lower your tire pressure. We've just we've just turned off of the main cut line and have now turned towards the Mababi gate sign. There's a fork in the road, you can't miss it. We have just entered the Chobi Reserve and we are on our way to Savuti. We just crossed through the Mababi Gate, which was quite an experience. So many overlanders have come before and everyone seems to head for the Savuti just because of the experience, the wildlife and the fact that it is a very, very wild place. So good to see all their stickers up on the doors. Damn it, if only I had mine. Some familiar ones there too. Look. We were hoping for a little bit more water on the roads. The sun is up and the temperature is climbing rapidly. We've got about a 68 kilometer drive to do and it reckons two and a half hours. Depending on the condition of the Sand Ridge Road, might take us a little bit longer. But let's enjoy the drive and most importantly, let's enjoy the adventure.
quarter past one in the afternoon. We just saw Will from Will of Africa. So good to see you, mate. But just after we left you, what's going on, right? I just tried to jump over from one side of the road to the other because there was oncoming traffic and I seem to be in a slight bit of uh, pickle in the thick sand. You're gonna right? get, do you need a winch? Nothing like getting stuck in proper sand. You need a winch. I don't know, I'm gonna try and see if I can get on it. Put some oomph, man. Ryan's the first one to be claimed by the Savuti sand. I feel like there's going to be many of us because it is seriously thick. I obviously hopped lanes. There's two lanes. There's what seems to be an unused track and obviously the one we're driving now, a very used track. So in order to make space, because the bush is very thick, I opted to take the unused track. Good to be stuck in Kalahari sand. I love it. This, this makes for an adventure. Max tracks, or what these things call? Treads. Treads. And everything was fine. We said cheers to Will. And I drove the track no problem. However, my mistake was trying to jump back over to the used lane. And without momentum, the trailer served as an anchor. And let me tell you, when that happens, it doesn't matter how many recovery tracks you have, that trailer will always be an anchor. Uh, every man for himself. Uh -huh. There's an unspoken rule within the group. When something like this happens, pick up the camera. Because that means you don't have to do the digging. Ryan, how important is it to dig out the sand underneath the trailer as well? Very, very important. Just clear those back wheels, the trailer wheels. But what I'm worried is I think the back diff is down on the ground. So plan will be to put the treads in the front, see if that'll pull out. But I'm thinking it might be better if I put them in the back. But let's see how it goes. I think just with some momentum, I think we'll be fine. It's not too badly stuck. Um, but let's see how it goes. It's a blooming hot day. Eh? That's what people underestimate. When you get stuck in bots, it's the heat that nails you. And you would need a lot of momentum to get out. So after trying to use the tracks twice and really beginning to battle in the heat, I decided it's time to just let's use the wild dog gear and winch, winch out, which we did. We winched off of the back of Chris's Toyota at a slight angle. We found a clearing in the bush and I winched straight out back onto the hard track. X tracks uh, didn't work, so we're going to have to winch off Chris. <clears throat> Chris is coming back now. We'll hook Ryan up with the recovery kit, wild dog recovery kit, because he's there's no ways. Just hope the weight, Ryan's a lot heavier than Chris. We hope the weight will be okay. Always remember, try and stay happy, enjoy the moments. I know it's hot and I'm a bit disgruntled, but keep your chin up. We'll get there eventually. Some lessons to be learned. Don't work too hard in the heat. It will sap you very quickly. Stay rehydrated. Have a bottle of cold water around just to bring your temperature down. A nice cold Coke also really helps replenish the sugar lost from digging out all the thick sand. You're gonna put it on free spool.
but I can't hook up to the trailer. Okay. Actually, become a bit serious, eh? Because if we can't winch off Chris to unhook the Echo and winch off me, because my vehicle is heavier, it's just so the sand is so dispersed because of the heat. I'm gonna have to move off the track as well, because if anyone else comes through, there's no way around. This is Africa, this is adventure. But it's so helpful having a good recovery kit. We've all got the wild dog recovery kit. And it just comes with everything that you need. So recovery is something we don't worry about because we know we'll have a safe, reliable recovery if you follow the right steps and you have the correct gear. We've used it before then, Makuya, where we winch some guys out. Yeah, this time we're winching Ryan, the back of Chris. Obviously the recovery points on the back of Chris's fortune are rated. <sighs> Amazing times, but it's hot, very, very hot. When winching, don't forget to always make sure you have spotters. If you don't have spotters, make sure you use a winch blanket just to absorb that. You know, if your synthetic rope or cable decides to go, then that'll dampen the force if it goes. Are you going hard shackles? Um, unless we have more soft shackles, but hard shackles I think is fine for the back. Yeah, for the, for the back. Yeah. So there's a soft shackle on the... On the winch? winch. Yeah. And then hard shackle on the... Sweet. Okay. Uh, brake, 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 brake. Okay, pull in winch, pull in winch, pull in winch. Yeah, okay, winch across. Once you get your front wheels on this island, it should be okay. I'll let you know at the back here with the trailer, but you can start turning right, slight right, eh? Exactly how your wheels are now. Okay, winch in, winch in. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Okay, winch in. Stop, that should be good, stop. You'll be, you'll be fine, the trailer's up out of the sand, you'll be good, we can disconnect. Thanks, Ed. Sweet, well done, boys, that worked rather well. Hey, that worked a treat, eh? Yep. Chris, were you getting sucked into oblivion there? Not too bad. Three Cokes and three waters, how good is that? Okay, so I don't want to count my chickens just yet, but it seems like we're out. I just want to give another little bit of advice and amongst everything that you've seen today. Make sure your gear is readily accessible. Keep it in the back with nothing else on. It just makes it a little bit easier, especially in this heat. I think it's what, 38, 39? Yeah, Maybe 40? It's hot. But anyways, cheers to the guys. Thanks for helping me get unstuck. Make sure you have the right recovery gear. Having the right recovery gear will give you a hell of a lot of confidence and it'll allow you to do recoveries the right way. And if you've got radios, then always stay in comms with the person you're either winching off of or your spotter. I am, however, very, very, very impressed with the 10-ton um, synthetic winch rope from Wild Dog. Jeez, what an amazing bit of gear. I don't know, I don't know what the weights are in the vehicle. I'd say 4.2 tons with the trailer as dead weight at the back. But yeah, overall, what an experience. Thanks to Ed and Chris for the help, man. And uh, only at the end, though, buggers let me dig with the spade and all of that nonsense. What a fantastic start to the severity. Absolutely magic.
it's been a hard day. We worked it out six and a half hour drive, obviously with an hour where I got stuck. I tell you what, it was a bit of a mission getting in and getting these trailers sorted out in the thick sand in these campsites. But we're here now, we're at campsite six and it's magic. It's good to be here. We had little dwarf mongoose, baby little pups running around here by our feet. Absolutely phenomenal. Good to be here, but we're sitting in the shade. I'm only gonna work on that thing when it's cooler, eh? Because I'm, I'm hot. Stay tuned in for some magic scenes from the next episode. <laughs>this episode and I just thought I'd give you some exciting news 4x4 Ventures after five long years of creating content for you guys has just reached a massive milestone 10,000 subscribers so I just wanted to say a big thank you to you all thank you for supporting the channel and let's do something different let's get to 50,000 subscribers and I tell you what you can come on a trip with me to some of the great spots and places that I've got to visit the only thing is, you have to get to Johannesburg. You can be local or international, we'll make it work. So hit that subscribe button, like, add a comment, all that good stuff down below, and hope to see you at 50,000 subscribers. Cheers guys, and thanks again. It means so much to me. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters, helping me get out on the next adventure. Sign up to Patreon, link in the write-up down below.